and turn the light on and turn the camera this way, my phone, whatever you want to call it, because that light is like extremely bright and it like does this hellacious glow that's just irritating. At least it's irritating to me. If it's irritating to me, I assume it's going to be irritating to y'all. So here's part two of the Never Have I Ever Nerdy Girl, the girl, Nerdy Doll Girl tag. Um to do, you know, I figure I'm just going to sit here and distract myself and do tags all night. Yes! Um, because I have to play catch up. Like I said. So, you know, I'm, I'm behind. I'm failing. Um, got the girl right here, so if you hear any funky ass noises, it's probably her. <laughs> She's, she makes weird noises. Okay, so, number five. Never have I ever regretted a doll purchase. <sighs> yeah, I mean, not not fully functionally. I'll do one of those things where it's like in the moment, I'm going to buy this doll because it's like on, on the sale. And then, uh like a week later it's still lit it's sitting in the box and I just kind of turn my nose up at it every time I walk by it. and those are like the dolls that I usually I don't do anything with and that I feel bad because there's somebody in this world that will do something with them and that somebody just is not me and I just usually end up gifting them like kind of like an adoption <laughs> to somebody who I know will take care of them and give them the life that they deserve that I cannot. Number two. Have I ever reinvented it all? Um, kind of. I turned a Merida doll. This is my interpretation of this answer. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry. Um, I, I, I did a Merida Disney doll. Um, put her on a fashionista body. And gave her black rooted hair and like wiped her lips of the makeup. Um... And then I kind of tried to make a David Bowie doll. I'm probably going to try to go right back to that. But if not, you know, I have a whole pile of to-dos. Um, regretting, regretted, regret, regretted selling a doll clothes wig, etc. Yes, twice. Once, because um, before I actually started collecting dolls, I would go to Goodwill and pick up ones that look decent, clean them up, sell them on eBay. And I would always start sales at like a dollar for a naked Barbie. And for the articulated ones, I thought that was, you know, about average dollar, two dollars start them off. People went insane and I didn't know why until now. Um, I sold an articulated fashionista Barbie, like the, a dark haired Teresa. I, I mean, it could have been a, one of the look dolls. I mean, I'm not too familiar with Barbie. Um, I just know she's one of the older articulated ones and had the articulated torso and I sold that one for like two or three dollars and then I sold a cutie pops doll that I mean I was here for her too like I was all about her she was adorable um I bought a lot of dolls just for her and uh <laughs> squirrel um, I bought a lot of dolls for that doll in particular, and then when, when I got it, I was like so enthused, and then I went on eBay and I got all of the outfits in the little extra like passion packs, and I got her the little pigtails and the eyeballs and stuff like that, and you know, I, it eventually got to the point where she's not a monster high doll. I'm trying to be a minimalist. I'm going to sell her on eBay. And my dumb ass sold her for less than what I paid for for her and all of her accessories. Because I sold it as a lot. If I knew then what I know now, I wouldn't have had that little accident. Okay. Slept with any of my dolls? I want to say no. Not as an adult. 
um, Hidden Doll I just bought, not recently. Um, I can't hide, because usually I buy my dolls anymore um, when we go out together, um, Andrew and I. And if, if we don't, we're not together, he usually checks the mail. So if I like mail order a doll, he'll know. And if I order one off of Amazon, because I share my Amazon account, my mother, she'll know. So it's pretty much a moot point for me to hide a doll. I'm an adult. I do what I want. There's just some times where there's like between YOLO and responsibilities. Um... Enter the doll competition. No, um, I'm not that far in my escapade yet. My Most of my dolls are either packed up in a box or naked and afraid. So that's where I'm at with this in, in this point. Um, bought a doll I said I would never buy. Technically, I said I would never buy a doll, period. Um, I would admire them from afar. And here I am, years later, buying dolls. A lot of dolls. Um, so yeah, technically all of my dolls, and especially Monster High, because when I worked at Walmart, my very first job, when I had my son, my first son, um, me and my simple little ass was like, um, I have a boy, these are so cute, but I don't think he would ever want to play with him, and now he loves him, so what's his name, um, Deuce, he loves Deuce. We have like three different deuces in the collection and he th that's his go-to for um, if, if he decides he wants to play with the girls or something, he'll be deuce. And then Ethan, um, my middle middle boy, he likes Nathan. Nathan Rot. We have two of those. So yeah, that's that. Um, taking my dolls out in public. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. There's pictures of me taking pictures of my dolls in public. My mom, she takes pictures of everything. So she has a picture of me downtown in front of a restaurant where it has like this really big window and there's like people watching and laughing at me sitting in the middle of the sidewalk setting my dolls up for a photo in a flower pot. Because I think it was like during um, the Indy 500 weekend because that's usually the weekend that they have the parade and we usually go downtown for the parade. And anytime we go downtown or to like the Children's Museum or the zoo or something, we'll take like at least one doll. And uh, like my mom is all for her American Girls and her BFCs. So that's what we usually take when we go on excursions out in public. Um, spend more money on my doll's wardrobe than my own. Girl, no. Okay. I go, I'll, I'll thrift. I'm a, I'm a thrifty thrifter. And I'm not ashamed to admit that. <laughs> uh, but I would go thrifting for fabric to make doll clothes before I would go buy fabric or buy like a $30 t-shirt. So for my dolls. Like, I can't justify prices for a lot of shit that I don't buy for myself. Like, I would never buy a $30 t-shirt for myself. And sometimes there's, like, doll shoes where they're, like, mass-produced, like, on... Even on AliExpress, they're, like, $29.99 for a pair of boots that would... SD-sized boots. Really, queen? Like, I could go buy myself a human size shoes for $29.99 in lunch. Get it together, interwebs. Um, wish I could trade clothes to my dolls. <sighs> yeah, I mean, 16 year old Summer would gladly trade clothes with most of the Monster High dolls. Um, just because, like, she was already goth. 16 year old Summer was a goth, she was short, tall boots, short skirt, and a different life. <laughs> um, Lived vicariously through my dolls. That is a loaded statement because um, I, I'm a firm believer in that's the reason why a lot of collectors, especially ones with like stories and characters and just well thought out storylines and these dolls have personality. These people 
who own, I don't like saying that, I don't like saying that about the dolls with personalities, and I don't like saying that about pets, but it's, it's a loose interpretation. They own these, and they, like, they breathe their own being into them. Um, maybe, you know, somebody they wish they could be, like, like a superhero's, um, alter ego, like Clark Kent and shit, Bruce Wayne. Um, you know, maybe you would like to look like this, but you, you can't afford it on a human scale or something, or you're not brave enough to have this kind of attitude yourself, so you give it to your doll. Shit like that. Or, you know, like, I've seen people where, you know, they don't have real kids. They don't want real kids. Um, I mean, if y'all want any, I'll sell them to you for cheap. Most of mine are housebroken. Um, but, you know, they, they'll get dolls, and that's fine. Do you, boo-boo. Do you. Um, had a crush on a doll. I have a crush on so many dolls in my Instagram feed, girl, let me tell you. And it's all superficial. Because, like, except for maybe, um, Kohaku Creations Toma, like, he's such a badass. He's adorable in, like, the gangster kind of way. Like, I could see him, like, as a person. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I love how some of y'all, most of y'all, a lot of y'all, do up your dolls, boys and girls. Like, I got so many dolly crushes. It's, it's awesome um why about how much the doll costs are worth come on man I would never would I ever just cause that's too much that is too much no I would never I never would and honestly prices for dolls in the long run is nobody's business it's really not if you enjoy your doll enjoy your doll I don't freaking matter if you've got the $100 um, resin sole doll and she has the $400 mini feed doll. If y'all enjoy those dolls just the same, then let it be. Don't be some star bellied sneeches over a damn price tag. Um, Overpaid for a doll. Yep. Just gonna leave it at that. Yep. Um, <laughs> I'm one of those people who started late on collecting Monster High dolls and, um, had to be one of those ones where I, if I'm not up at 2 a.m., like, stalking lots and stuff, I wouldn't get half of the, the dolls I get, got, because I'm not trying to pay a certain amount for certain dolls. Sorry. Um, got into a fight on social media. Not directly. No. Um, there's, there's been fighting words said. That's kind of part of the reason why I don't post my dolls frequently on Facebook. Because every time I do, somebody always has something to say. And it makes me get in my feelings. And then I have to remember where I'm at, who I am, how old I am. Like, I'm an adult. <laughs> and I'm not fixing to get into an argument with another adult on the Facebook over a plastic person. If you really don't like it, don't look at it. Mind your business. Next question. Um, have you ever, ha, never have I ever put my doll in a less than safe pose or position for a good picture? Um, I don't think I've gotten that far with my BJDs, but the, I hold my breath every time I take a picture with one of my, um, Fashion dolls or one of my like 18 inch play, play, play line dolls, whatever you want to call them. Because I have, I have some uh, American Girl and I have a Journey Girl and I have uh, two animators. So those, those ones, any of my other dolls that I take out and try to take a picture, look at all cute at the canal or something. I hold my breath. Because if the wind blows the wrong way, you know, I'm not jumping in the White River after you. Sorry, not sorry. Um, last question. Have you ever reshelled a doll because you found the perfect sculpt? No, and I, I can honestly say I probably wouldn't if, if ever should I ever get that far in like my storyline just because I try to think of the character that I want 
and envision them in my head and then find the sculpt to match it first. And you know, if something else comes along, then I might sell the first one before purchasing the second one just because, I mean, I'm very money conscious because I guess I have, I have a large family and with a large family comes a large amount of bills. So I tend to be very money conscious and um, try to keep myself within my own means and self-control. I can't just go out and buy, you know, this doll because I like it and then I don't like it and then I have to sell it. And then that's just a process. So there, there's that. But um, that's the end of um, part two of the Never Have I Ever. Um, I guess I could because I have like two more list prompts and then like maybe one or two that are just like a discussion prompt that I could do just because it's this is distracting me from the real world life because I don't have my dolls to play with right now so I'll just play with YouTube so yeah I'll probably just like bombard everybody's feed with tag prompt catch-up videos but i'm gonna finish this one right now so bye bye